Um, so in this case, basically, we're just going to go ahead and go through steps one, two, three, and four. I know number four uh, we didn't cover yet, so I'm going to explain that as you when we do this problem. However, step number one, we should, you guys should have no one to do this because all we're asking for is the zeros, the real zeros. Well, we know the real zeros are represented on a graph by their x-intercepts. And then I ask you to understand their multiplicity. Now, we don't guarantee actually know what exactly the multiplicity is, but we can determine if the multiplicity is even or odd. And that's what I wanted you guys just to basically do. So if we know the zeros, I'm just going to let them, I'm just going to put them in a solution set, are negative 4, negative 2, 0, and 2. Right? The real zeros are the x-intercepts. That's it. So the multiplicity, we don't really know what exactly the multiplicity is, which I'll explain in the next example, because what the multiplicity is could change depending on what the degree is of the polynomial. So don't just don't assume it's, oh, it's 1 or it's 2. The only thing we know is the multiplicity for each and every one of these zeros is odd, because you need to be looking up here. So therefore, it would make sense in the instruction that they cross at every single x-intercept. So I'm just going to write little odd above it for each problem or for each 0. Okay, Because they all cross. There's no bouncing going on, at least at the x-intercepts. Then the next thing I'm going to tell you is to write this in factored form. Ladies and gentlemen, in your homework, do you remember when we wrote this as if I gave you a list of zeros to write the polynomial? Do you guys remember? And then what do you do? You set these all equal. You set them all equal to x, right? And then you set that equal to 0. And then you write that as a factor. Do you guys remember doing that for each one of these? I already did examples of this on your homework. You set them equal to x, you set them equal to 0, then you write them as a factor. And the reason why I wanted you guys to do that, or why we did those problems, is because you guys should already know, oh, the factor is the exact opposite sign of the 0. So guess what? Without going through a lot of trouble, I could actually figure out what the factored form of this would be. y equals. Um, I'm just going to do x plus 4, x plus 2, x, and then x minus 2. Does everybody see how I came up with that factored form? That's just like the homework that you already did. Then could you, if I asked you to write the polynomial, could you? Could you multiply that out? It would be a little bit more math work, right? That's why I didn't ask. But you could do that, correct? OK. Now, we all know the multiplicity is odd. The next thing I asked you to do was to determine the degree. Well, ladies and gentlemen, the degree works in a couple ways. We know that the degree is equal to the number of real uh, to solutions. Well, the, real, the number of real solutions is the x-intercepts. So one way we could figure out the degree is just count the x-intercepts. 1, 2, 3, 4. However, the number of real is, can you, do you only have real solutions of a polynomial? Or could you also have? complex solutions, right? So just because you have x-intercepts, that doesn't always tell you the num what the degree is. So there's another way we could verify. We could also verify by the number of turning points, because the number of turning points is always one less than the degree. So if I can count the number of turning points, all I have to do is add one to get my degree. So what I found out is there's four x-intercepts. So I'm, a, I'm thinking the degree is four. But let's verify that with the number of turning points. Well, here the graph is decreasing, and then it goes to increasing, correct? That's a turning point. It's increasing, now decreasing. That's a turning point. Decreasing, increasing. That's a turning point. So there's three turning points. If there's three turning points, that means the degree is 4. So does that verify my claim here? Yes. So therefore, number 3, the degree is equal to 4. Now, the leading coefficient, I didn't really care what the value is of the leading coefficient because, ladies and gentlemen, if I put like a number 2 here, that's going to affect the dilation. That's going to affect the stretching and the compression of the graph. But that doesn't affect the zeros. So I'm not really looking for what actually the number is of the leading coefficient. I just want to know, is it positive or is it negative? So if I have a graph that goes rises left and rises right, if I look on my end behavior, is that when the leading coefficient is positive or negative? Seth, I'd be, right, I'd be expecting you to be writing this stuff down. So therefore, your leading coefficient is positive. Because if you're not understanding it or making sense, it would make sense to me to write this stuff down. So not only could you have it to study off of, 
but you could also bring it to me if you're still if it's still not making sense to you. Everybody follow me with this? Yeah. Okay. Then the last one is to determine the absolute max and absolute min. Okay? So rather than spending a whole time really explaining absolute max, absolute min, or writing down definitions, um, I'm just going to show you guys how to do them in examples so you guys can use those examples to remember. Because it's really not much. I just don't, want, I don't really need to spend time with definitions. What the absolute max and absolute min basically represent is the absolute highest or lowest point on the graph. So let's talk about absolute max. Is there an absolute highest value of this graph? No, it's just going to keep on going to infinity, right? There's not like one single point you could say that's the highest. So there is no absolute max. So I'm just going to write absolute max as ABS. And I'm just going to say there's none. If I'm talking about absolute minimum, what I'm asking for is what is the lowest point on this graph? Negative 3, negative 3. However, some your test might not ask what the point is. It might say, what's the lowest value? So if the point negative 3, 3 is the point, if we're talking about the lowest point on the graph, what value are we talking about? It's ABS, not ASS. Absolute. Min. So what is the lowest point here? What, is the low, what, what are we talking about? Are we talking about the x values or the y values when we're talking about the lowest? Why? So depending on the question, they could be asking for what the point, or they might just say, what is the lowest value? And you would just say, y equals negative 3. Because we're only talking about the lowest y value. Okay. Now the next one is relative, relative max. And what relative max basically means is, what is kind of like the, um, basically like the second highest kind of def technically point that we could have? So do we have actually a high point that's within a range that's a relative max? Negative 1, 2. And then our relative min would be values that are a minimum between a certain point, so like another turning point. So do we have another minimum point, but that's actually not the lowest? 1, negative 2. OK? There we go. And that's it for that. Does that make sense? Kind of. Yes, Brendan, no? Doesn't make sense?